Hi, I'm Michelle Olivier, and you're listening to Hey, I Want Your Job, the podcast that looks at amazing jobs and what it takes to get them. Hey, and welcome to Hey, I Want Your Job. Today, we are not talking about a job. No. Today, we are talking about all jobs. I am once again joined by the fantastic and infinitely smarter than me, Dr. Kirsten Lee Hill, <laughs> um, to discuss uh, myths about the job market. Oh, yes. Kirsten, so how's many. it going? I know. Right. I know. <laughs> so I want to start by just like honoring the fact that uh, Kirsten, this question broke Kirsten yeah. a little bit. <laughs> it did. Yeah, it's so true. I got yeah. like this meltdown call <laughs> <laughs> that was like, oh, Michelle, there are no real facts. There is only smoke and mirrors. Kirsten, tell everybody how this, how this broke the unbreakable Kirsten Lee Hill. I feel like usually I can get to a point in like Googling and reading news articles where it's like, okay, like this is where the information came from. And because I know it came from here, I know it's like not very good, right? Or like I know the bounds of information. And when I was looking up these like stats around a hidden market, like the great resignation and the labor shortage, lots of things written about it. You see the same stat again and again and again. And I'm like digging into them. And I was like, I just like, I can't find truth. You know, I was like, I literally can't find like exactly where this came from. And then I was like, I don't want to go on your podcast because I don't like, I don't know where it came from. Like some economist is going to be listening. He's going to be like, um, if you had only blah, 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 it's like right there. And I'm like, look, sir, I don't know. I don't know. So let's pause. And like you said, like nine things there. So let's pick one. We're going to talk about the problematic nature of these supposed numbers, and then we can go to the rest. So let's start with Kirsten. Tell me about the great resignation. Is there a great resignation? What does that mean? <laughs> Good question. Uh, it seems like maybe there's a great resignation. <laughs> maybe. I'm like, I don't, I don't know, right? It's based on the of a stat that came out of the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, and they do a job openings and labor turnover survey, which the acronym is JOLTS, which is actually like pretty cool, like a little JOLTS survey. But so based on that survey that they do every month, allegedly, it's, you know, it's maybe <laughs> Americans are quitting their jobs at like record high paces. And like, that's where this all comes from. It's like the number. So it was like in August, like 4.3 million people quit. And the reason we find that out now is because there's a delay and like they have a reference month and six weeks later, they right. release the data. But then apparently they also do revisions, which I don't really understand what's, what's involved. Delay in data changes, et cetera. So let's talk about that. So <laughs> you talked before about the problems with survey data. Yes. Yes. Because sir, I, I, I am not going to insult you by telling you <laughs> the problems with survey data. So Kirsten, please share with the class the problems with survey data innately. I think innately, people like to rag on survey data because it's mostly self-reported, right? And I'll say like, I actually love survey data, but I like surveying people about, <laughs> that's my dog. He loves surveys. Hi, be quiet. I like surveying people about perceptions. So like if you're self-reporting a perception, that to me is true because I'm asking you how you like think. If it's an objective fact, then you start to get error in it, right? Because people are reporting something that you could actually know the numbers, but I'm asking you to remember what the numbers are. And I'm not necessarily giving you the bounds on how to calculate it. So like with the JOLT survey, they basically send out all these definitions, like how you calculate these things. And the problem is, I don't know if you are doing it that way. I don't know if like what you consider a quit 
is what I consider a quit. I don't know, you know, what month you're thinking of, if you're following the rules, if you're not following the rules. I think there's just some like inherent error in the reporting, but there's also, when you look at these national surveys like this, inherent error in the sample. And that was like where I really got broken because I was like, who the heck is taking this survey? Like, I actually don't know. It's like this many companies are taking it, but it's like, what companies and who responds and what kind of people respond? Maybe it's only the people who have really good numbers or really bad numbers. And so I think there's just a lot of questions around it. So it's like, is the data good that I'm getting from these people? And also, am I getting it from the right or like a representative group of people? And that's what it's me, like makes me the worst, most worried as an HR professional, because how do you like, you may, I'm sure that the statisticians at the Department of Labor are very good at what they do and that they <laughs> sent out the survey to a representative sample set, but you don't get to control who sends back the survey. Yeah. So you may have sent it out to an appropriate selection, but what you got back, if only, you know, automobile manufacturers replied, <laughs> Yeah, you may get a really weird number right in the market and mm -hmm. there's no information out there to explain how they handle that, what their methodology is, where mm -hmm. are they getting this, what is like, and I know that you and I both feel really strongly that anytime you are presenting something as fact yeah. that comes from that kind of data, you need to show your receipts. So you need to explain where does it come from? How did you arrive at that number? All of that kind of stuff. And that's just not there for any yes. of this. And it like, which baffles the mind, right? Like it's almost, I feel like it's like they said, well, we're the federal government and we said so, yeah. and that's how you know. And my response to that is the federal government says a lot of whacked out shit that I not want to take as read. Like, I want to see, again, I want to see your receipts. Yeah. If you told me, Michelle, statistically, blah, blah, blah is true. I'd be like, really, Kirsten, fascinating. And how did we get that number exactly? Like, yeah. it's just a natural, I think, responsible grown-up question to ask. But I get really irritated. That I don't feel like the media is asking that. Like, did you, in your research, did you even, I have, I, in my research, I found no media anywhere doing anything other than sensationalizing this. It's just the number. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's just the number. It's like, look at this number. And I think like in defense of the media, they're like, well, the U S government crunched this number. So it must be true. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's just that, like, that's what irritates me about all of this is it's like, oh, well, like that's a respectable institution. So like, this must be accurate. And it's like, well, I don't like it's mind boggling that you can't find a description of the sample, right? Like that yeah. it literally blows my mind that that's not like really easy or even like, you know, the number of people who took it, you know, what, I mean? what are the demographics? Like what, to your point, like what industries are they in? It's just, that should be the so. Geographic distribution. What is yeah. their organizational size and infrastructure? What is their, you know, product base? What is their, like, there's so many things, right? Even if you said, we sent this to a thousand companies in technology, what the hell do you define as a company in technology? Yeah. Did you send it to Apple? Well, there's a whammy, right? Like Fang is, is its own deal. <laughs> you know, like, do you, is Amazon more impacted by um, consumer products, by manufacturing, by shipping and logistics? or by technology, you tell me, because you can, okay. I can make a great case for any of those things, right? And so what affects any one of those areas, whereas like a pure SaaS company that is, they have no thing, <laughs> they just have a technology, like yeah. those, is that what we're calling technology and where's the line? And there's so many of those kind of questions, who gets to decide? Does the same person decide every time? And if so, is it consistent? And yeah. like, I, I just feel like, cause we were talking about another website the other day as well, where like, that was your frustration was that there was no consistency in rankings for things. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they were yeah. like, 
this these people scored a four and like they scored a four because of this this and this like but this other company has scored a three for the same mm -hmm. and yeah so yeah. people are flawed and varied and so mm -hmm. perfect data is not made. no and i think the best thing that people can do which is like what i always push people to do is just actually be transparent about it like if you you know just say make a freaking rubric like i would never do something like if you're gonna give people ratings don't have some like paragraph you write that explains the ratings it'd be like here's the rubric we use to give this rating right and be able to show that you used it consistently or if you find out you didn't use it consistently like like just own up to it right i just think like people are so there's like this quest to like be perfect and have good data and like I think it kind of hinders us because then people just hide all the stuff that doesn't look that good and it's like well actually I would just like just tell me that you only talk to five of your friends to get this number just tell me right, right? like don't and I think on the flip side with the media and the sensationalizing which we talked a little bit like in this case in particular there are so many like additional questions that like they should be asking too. Like you're looking at how many people quit. Like you're not looking at how many people like quit for a different job, right? It's like, oh my gosh, quitting is at an all time high. And it's like, okay, but are like people going into entrepreneurship at an all time high? Is hiring like at an all time high? Like I keep hearing that it's like a, what is it? Like if, if you're looking for a job, this is like your market. Cause they're right. I just feel like there's- Hot market, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like what there's so the much that context mean? yeah there's so much context just like missing instead we find like this one like really sexy number and it's like let's just put this number everywhere yeah. and sure let's have businesses make decisions on that that's a really great idea i i totally and completely agree so let's talk about the it's a hot market um yeah i did the research here and i looked and the data around it's a hot market seems to be compiled from two different things. Okay. Mostly it's just a thing that as far as I can tell, they like to say a lot. <laughs> they being here in the media. I have said it as well. And that is because my experience as a recruiter is that at this moment in the, in the market, it is this really weird situation right on the one hand i cannot find the candidates for the skills i'm looking for for love or goddamn money like i i don't even know i have a client that is like tearing their hair out frustrated we have contacted 400 people with the skill set we have turned that into two interviews for them because people are just like, nope, not interested. No, thanks. 400 people turning into two interviews. Like that is insane levels of numbers. And so when you hear it's a hot market, right? And like the people that we have in the process, they're like, oh yeah, I'm also interviewing with five other companies. So anecdotally, as a recruiter living in this like twilight zone reality right now that's how it feels at the same time there are thousands of candidates out there who've been looking for a job for months and can't get called back and i know that people hate this whole like the system is broken but damned if that doesn't feel like the system is broken like yeah. i don't know where the disconnect is in those things. So when I looked into it, the it's a hot market seems to one be anecdotal from recruiters experiencing this Two, come from the fact that um, there is a, come from the number of job creations per mm -hmm. month. And I am not clear on where that number comes from. Other than the fact that it gets <laughs> reported very authoritatively of course. by governmental bodies. So again, Department of Labor very authoritatively reports on, you know, th this many new jobs were created in the U.S. last week. By whom? Where? Based on what? Because when I 
create jobs. I don't tell the Department of Labor. Like, so <laughs> how do you know? Yeah. Are you yeah. doing like, like, are we checking like the numbers on LinkedIn and Indeed? Because some of those are fake. <laughs> like some yeah. of those are scams, right? Some of those are the same five agencies all advertising the same job with the same company. So how in the hell would you would you know if it's a hot market or not? So you are a, not a recruiter. You're in no. for this the purposes of this inquiry, <laughs> you are a layman. So yes. when you hear it's a hot market, what does that mean to you? To me, it sounds like, oh, it must be really easy to get a job. That's what I right? think. It's like. <laughs> I would agree. like it's really easy a job. But and that's also why wouldn't it be great if we had better data that's like why are all these people, like I'm on the chains and LinkedIn, like all these really qualified people who can't get a job to save their life, but it's a really hot market and it's really easy to get a job. I'm like, man, like wish we had some information on this. Like, is it certain fields? Is it certain like levels of education? Like, what is it that makes it hot for someone and like seem very not hot for other people? Yeah, and I, I honestly, like, I don't, no. So, and, and this is just genuinely like me saying that. So I know that when I meet, engage with, et cetera, people that have the skill sets that I'm looking for, I'm like, fantastic. Snatch. And there you go. Right. Like, oh, you're a, a senior QA engineer with a specialty in automation. Maybe I got three jobs for you. Let's go. Oh right. Gosh oh, you're a PMM with some experience in SaaS. Hey, how you doing? Good looking. Got about four jobs. But like the people that I find that are struggling are either, so one of the big ones is people who are geographically restricted oh, and in an industry or a sector that tends to be face-to-face. -face. Or who have a, like there are a couple people out there who only want a face-to-face -face job. <laughs> That's tough I'm going not right one now. Of them. Yeah. <laughs> if I never see faces again, it will be fine. It will be oh fine. God. I am down for everybody to just turn off their Zoom camera and like I don't even have to wear a bra. That would be amazing. <laughs> Living the dream, Kirsten. Yeah. I'm with um, you. I'm with you. <laughs> oh my god. This is lipstick crap of what you speak. No. Um. <laughs> but yeah. So I feel like. There's that, but so I've seen those. Yeah. I don't know if it is a market shift that we have some skill sets and some positions are becoming passe. So mm -hmm. we had that in what, 2008, right? Administrators kind of went away. And the volume of jobs for administration shrunk immensely down. Mm -hmm. um, and so people who have been administrators for their whole life really struggled to find roles. They had to find ways to pivot, et cetera. So I don't know if we're seeing that at like a smaller level in multiple types of positions. I, I just don't know. And I, how would, if somebody wanted to try to unravel this, right, yeah. and figure out what in the hell is going on, how would they do that? Like if I was going to say, here's a sack of money, Kirsten, go figure out why <laughs> there's this disconnect. Where yeah. would you start? What would you do? I think to me, the biggest piece of that would be really defining this, like the population or the sample of organizations that you need to talk to, right? I think that to me is what's most confusing about this information to your point about what does it mean to be in technology? It's like, what are the types, you know, like, one factor could be size of organization. Like, okay, that's fine. But like, what are the industries? I actually worked on a survey it's probably about a year ago and we were trying to make a list so like companies could tell us what industry they're in. And you know, there's like no good comprehensive list of industries. And I'm looking at like the global standards that are used by like OECD, just like going everywhere. And I'm like, wow, like how is there literally no list of, of like what the industries are? And then like the lists that are there have these like wild categories. Or I think in one of them, I was getting lumped in with like manufacturing. And I'm like, that seems weird that I would be with manufacturing as someone who doesn't create anything, right? And so to me, 
one, we need a list that everyone falls into a bucket, right? We can't have everyone in like the other police specify, but I think if you want to figure out what's going on, it needs to be like, okay, like what are the groups of organizations we need to talk to? And in this case, industry, industry role type to your point, because maybe I'm working at a Google, but I'm in marketing. That's like very different than working at a Google and like being a coder. And so I think like there's roles and I, oh, like, it'd be so like nerdy, but fun, but it's like, you just would need like some super list of like, these are all the different types of roles and we need to like sort them in some way. And these are all the different types of companies because those are all ways you would want to cut the data by, right? Like seniority level, if that matters, I think really nerding out and like defining the set, or, like, these are all the things that could influence this. So like, we need to look at it by all these things. And then I think, I mean, people do successfully sample and like, generalized to populations. I like, I just wish everyone would take a survey if you asked them to, but they're not going to, right? But so then you probably would have to send out a survey, but also like, are there things the government could do? Like maybe you get a tax deduction of some sort if you fill out this survey and now suddenly like you're incentivized to participate because you're paying less taxes, you know, or you get like a special designation through like I don't know, the SBA, like, I, like there are things we could put together to get better information from people. But I think we just need like that full complete information to know how to cut it. I feel like consulting is like such a good example, just because the things I get bucketed into on surveys is wild. Like sometimes I'm getting counted as like market research, which I, I don't do market research. Like that doesn't make any sense. Other times I'm getting counted as like a university and it's just like, this is not a good like categorization system. So I will do you one up on that because to be fair, what you do is super niche and there's like 20 of you, right? I'm a freaking recruiter. Yeah, where do there, you go? We are like, the world is lousy with recruiters, mostly lousy recruiters, but like there, <laughs> we're freaking everywhere. Where do you put a recruiter? What am I? Am I sales? Am I HR? Am I business? Am mm -hmm. I consultancy services? What am I? See, and the answer is that. it depends on the fucking list. Well, so then it's like, how do you report information? It's like, how do you find out where there are jobs and where there aren't jobs if we're like floating in like 9 million categories? That's right. And how do you, like, how can you say, oh, like 8 billion jobs were made yesterday in sales? Yeah, but if all 8 billion of those are recruiters. Yep. And Either you're a recruiter who doesn't think of yourself as a salesperson, <laughs> delusion, <laughs> um, <laughs> or you um, are, you know, looking for a more traditional sales role, then you're going to be like, what's wrong with me? Why am I broken? And I cannot get a job in sales. Well, because my friend, the only sales roles getting created are the ones for recruiters. And that's where I think that maybe like, maybe this is what is kind of happening, right? Is that right now you can't find a recruiter. Like there are so many vacancies for recruiters. So many. They're like throwing money at people who have done this shit for a while. I like, mm. I wish people would throw more money at me, but like, whatever. <laughs> um, I'm just teasing. I do fine. Nobody worry. Um, but um, like I, there are, there's a shortage of recruiters, especially ones who have specific skills. Great. But also how, like, you got to think, like, how is this sustainable? If it's because what people are talking about that, you know, post, as we're coming out of the pandemic and things are returning to normal, markets are stabilizing, et cetera that now all of a sudden everybody's recruiting because they're not so panicky, well, then that's going to die down. Yeah. So if you've gone out and hired eight new recruiters because of this current wave, yeah. what happens in Q4 next year when we've returned to 2019 levels and you've got these eight people? Yeah. And so, so they like, are going to be in the jolt survey. They're going to be in the jolt survey, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, but I just, there's nothing. And I, I think that because there's just all of this hype and no actual 
numbers about mm-hmm. it, it makes it really hard to forecast and business plan. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, even think about like the small business piece. I would assume it's missing because to me, I think I probably know at least a hundred people who run a business. I don't think any of them are taking the JOLT survey from the Department of Labor. You, you know what I mean? Or from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, right? Like, I don't think that's happening. So it's like, is there also this whole piece of our economy of like small businesses and entrepreneurs and like solopreneurs, whatever, that's just missing from this picture? Like, I feel like we're operating on incomplete and not great information. And to your point, I think it it really just makes people feel, I don't know, either like falsely hopeful or bad. Like, because either you're entering the job market and you're like, yes, it's hot market right now. I'm going to get a job. Or like you're struggling and not getting a job and then you're just feeling bad about yourself. And like, either way, it's not based on true things, right? Like, <laughs> how is yeah. that helpful to anyone? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I, it's, I don't, you would think, I guess to my mind, right? In 2021, if you pay somebody anything, right? You have to tell the IRS. Yes. Yes. If you, like, there's so many places that we have to tie into electronic yeah. systems that it kind of seems insane that we still are in this situation of not having any fucking clue what is actually going on. Instead, it's just weird data that seems to be mostly made up. That is a really great point about the IRS, where it's like, like that stuff that we're submitting every year, right? Add the questions to that. I mean, it's only once a year, but... Well, it's more than once here because you have to, so like you oh, quarterly. Do, yeah. Quarterly reporting. You can tell I'm behind on my taxes. <laughs> yes, yes, there is quarterly reporting. God. <laughs> You're so funny. But yeah, like, so there's all kinds of, you know, there's just, there's so many ways and things that you have to do to report. And I just don't, it doesn't make sense to me that it should be this vague and I feel like I I don't know like you you navigate these waters much more than I do what is your sense of why we would have such incredibly bad data for that I feel like the more I learned about research like over the years and especially in school the more I just became skeptical of everything because it just seems like people don't like they're just not that thorough. And sometimes it's because they don't have the budget. Sometimes it's because they don't have the time. Sometimes it's because they have like zero training and they're like some just recent graduate put in this job and they just have to like do this thing that they have no idea how to do. And there's really no oversight of it, which is why I like the idea about having this like mandated transparency so it's like okay like if everyone's gonna go rogue and just like collect really crappy data then at least like can we mandate that they have to slap on there the information on like who the fuck it came from right because then it's like you as someone who's reading the information can decide if it's true or not but right now it's it's totally what you said it's all smoke and mirrors like everyone wants to look good people want to be important and relevant and it's like oh it sounds so cool to be like look we found that like five million people are looking for jobs Ooh, and it's just like okay (laughs) and you know there's all of this stuff about like the social media and that's the thing about how like they report bad information and there's false data claims etc and i would i am that woman that i literally just sit there and i like i went to the trump uh, sites on Facebook, and I just reported every single post. Report, 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 report. And I had all of my friends do it as well. And we spent hours. It was very cathartic. Like, yeah. oh, you made, oh, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Um, but what do you do when you can't act? Like, to be fair, like, how do you fact check this stuff? And it's so frustrating, right? Because I am a huge believer of I don't like giving people bad data. At the same time, 
to do what I do well, everything has to be data driven, right? So on the candidate side of things, when I'm helping people do job search, when I'm helping them do interviews, that sort of thing, I have to give them some kind of a guide, right? Like, can't be like, apply for jobs. How many? I don't know, like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. What does a lot look like? I don't know. What does it look like to you? I don't want to give you a number. I don't have data on that. But like part of my brain says that. Yeah. But what comes out of my mouth is you should target 40 jobs a week. And they're yeah. like, why? Because that's a good solid number. 40 jobs yeah. a week. That'll give you a sample set that is large enough to let you know where there's a problem. And then they're like, okay, well now what? Right. And so then I'll be like, well, <clears throat> after that. Um, if you have less than a 25% engagement when you're applying for stuff, then you're doing something wrong. And they're like, oh, okay. And they, they treat this like it's gospel. But honestly, yeah. Christian, I'm largely making it up because it comes from the fact that like, why would you do something that does not work 75% of the time? Yeah. That just seems insane to me. Yeah. Like if whatever you're doing doesn't work 75% of the time, then you need to do something else because this is dumb. So yeah. like that's kind of yeah. where the, you have a 75% failure rate, but thanks that yeah. it, so it's, and, and it, I mean, it also comes from having done this for a very long time and, you know, understanding that like shit happens. And so you have to have margin of error, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very educated guess, but I am essentially making it up. Um, and I would love to have real numbers, Yeah, but there's nowhere as far as I can tell to get them from, which brings me to the other one that I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah. The hidden job market. Oh my God. So hidden. I can't even find anything about it. Oh no. <laughs> there are so many statistics about it, Kirsten. So many. 80% of jobs are filled through the hidden job market, unless it's 70 or maybe 60, but oh a God. very high percentage are filled. I, new, new, I think it was like Newsweek said 70 to 90. In it's the so experts cool. column. In the experts think, column. <laughs> what at the frickity frock is like, it's just, that's not even a thing. Let's just analyze this prima facie, right? Yeah. Why in the name of all that is holy would I, as an employer, think to myself, do you know, I have this need for somebody to come and help me. But I feel that probably the best way to fill this need is to tell no one. Yeah. Keep it secret. Put a cloak over it or something that nobody can ever find. This That is just stupid. It, and it just innately flies in the face of logic when we have everybody's trying to hire recruiters and what do recruiters do? We shout about jobs. That's our whole job yeah. is to be like, Hey, here, there are yeah. jobs. You should apply. Yeah. Right? Like that's our whole thing. So if they only want to hire people through secret channels of secret, they would not be hiring us. I couldn't yeah. even find a consistent definition of what a hidden job market meant. Agreed. Agreed. But it, what intrigues me, though, is that when I think about, like, jobs I've had, they never come from a recruiter or a post online. So I would assume they're all from the hidden. You know what I mean? Like, I am, as one of the pro tips on how to access the hidden job market says, I'm, like, talking to my professional contacts, and, like, then suddenly there's some magical position right it's like is it a hidden job market or is it like early stage we haven't had time to list this yet you know what I mean like I just think like to your point what does it mean if the way to access it I mean again I don't like the, the how Newsweek recommends you access it is like through associations and like reaching out to your contacts it's like well that's the way to do it like is it hidden or again, like, is it early stage or is it like, maybe you're such an incredibly special human. Someone will make a role for you. And it was never going to go on LinkedIn, but they're like, oh, you're so cool. We're just going to, you do this. That's I don't one know. Of those things that people tell you happen. <laughs> I've been in recruitment a long goddamn time. 
<laughs> I've seen that happen. Like, I mean, I could count on one hand so the number funny. of times that <laughs> shit has happened. And I hate it because, like, you hear these really bad, like, employment guru people be like, always ask about other opportunities because even if this isn't a good one, they might make a role for you yeah. if they like you. Dude, stop. They are not going to do that. And yes, everybody has an uncle's cousin's brother's wife that had that happen one time. And so now it's gospel. Stop. 99% of the time, that's not how business works. It makes me think of, oh my gosh, what is, it's a rom-com. He's just not that into you. When the guy's advice is like, you are the rule. Like stop thinking of yourself as the exception like yes I know this one girlfriend of yours this is what happened to them but it's like you don't operate from that mindset well yeah Yeah. interesting right like it's exactly that though like that is that is exactly it right a they're just not that into you (laughs) and b you are the norm right like this is not like wobegon all of our children are not above average that's not how it works that's not what average means right And I just, like, I get so frustrated um, with this kind of stuff. I, the the best description of a hidden job market that Uh I have heard that had any credence at all was I have heard it described as including roles filled by agencies. So their argument was that if roles get filled by agencies, so third-party recruiters, that third-party recruiters don't necessarily advertise. Hmm. I mean, they do, but some, you know, they may or may yeah. not, that they tend to be direct contact of folks. Um, and that, you know, you don't necessarily know what role you're applying for, et cetera. I mean, maybe if you squint really hard, you could get there. I still just think it's a bullshit number. Yeah. Like, and I think it's also a scaremongering number, right? Like if your message, if what you're, if you're trying to do is scare people, well, you're a dick and you should stop. If yeah, what yeah. you're trying to do is tell people that it's important to network, then just say it's important to network. Yeah. Give yeah. a number that's like... of hiring managers said that networking was an influencing factor in their decision to hire somebody. That is probably true and definitely way less douchey (laughs) of a thing than this whole like hidden job market farce. And literally, this is one of those, like when we try to look into this whole, like recruiters, look at your thing for 10 seconds. I have heard it my entire, entire career. I have heard these numbers and I have never once in the entirety of my career had anybody who could tell me where the hell they come from. Mm -hmm. And that, that, didn't that end up coming from one of those weird random, like websites where they're trying to take your money to make your resume better. And they had done like some I feel like a lot of things come from like weird companies that no longer exist. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, back in 1998, we did this, we did this study and this is what we learned and everyone, everyone just takes it again, which is why, like, what's another, like, number one thing you should ask when you see a stat is like, what decade is this from? I'm, I'm curious. I tried to get an article published so badly. I like emailed it to all these places and it was because I had read some article in like Market Watch, which I don't even know if it's reputable or not, but it was basically like being a CEO is deadly. Like that was the whole tagline. I was like, that's so fascinating. And then when you unpack it, the data is like super, super effing old. And it's based on like birth and death certificates. You don't know really anything about the CEOs and then like in the article. And then if you get really nerdy and read the like actual like study, it was like for totally other purposes. It was about like companies who are about to be taken over. It was just like one of those things where I'm like, wow, like I like want to be nicer to the media, but I just like, I can't. It's like, you they need, make it so hard. you just make like, you're just making stuff up to be like, oh my God, being a CEO is deadly. Oh, like, God, that's like scary. Like what it's like, we're just trying to scare everyone. And again, like there's no accountability and people I don't know, like, I would like people to be more skeptical and like much less trusting. I'm like, actually, every time you hear something 
literally from anyone, you should be like, yeah, I don't know if that's true. That's like the default. I don't know if that's true. Okay. Let me look into it. (laughs) But you say that. Yes. And down that path is how we are in with the fake news crowd. Like, oh, the children aren't in cages at the border. That's fake news. No, they they are. There are pictures of the children in the cages at the border. So, like, I feel you. And, like, the the data nerd girl in me is like, yeah, Kirsten, get them. But then, like, the realist in me is like, we need to be able to trust things that we see in responsible media. But I do think that I like your they nutrition so label. Hard. I do. <laughs> and I like, even responsible media reports some stuff, but it's like, this is just like, even if it's not egregiously bad, it's like a lot of times I'm like, okay, but this isn't actually what it says. You know what I mean? It's not like yeah. it'd be like, it's not going to hurt anyone to believe this necessarily but like it's still not really that true and like that's what worries me and I'm like I actually kind of get why there are conspiracy nuts who are like trust nothing because I'm like that's like not totally unfair but I think like because of my political meanings I'm like some things are worse to believe than others you know what I mean like, right but then again did you see MC Hammer tweeted the other week that was like God, I love MC Hammer getting into the research world, but he was like, when you measure, include the measurer. And I'm like, exactly effing right. So it's like, yeah, like when things are being produced by like conservative media versus liberal media, they're spun differently. And like, that's like, we're just, we get so far away from like this objective truth that it's like, it does make it hard to take things at face value because for me, at least, I'm so used to digging into it and being like, well, actually, that's bullshit. I'm like, well, crap. Like, what What do I believe? And then I spend nine hours on the internet on Friday nights researching ethical clothing practices because everyone's lying about it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, we don't, not everyone has time for that, myself, myself included. Agreed. And I think that, so I guess we're not really here to solve all the world's problems because, girl, that's a longer <laughs> podcast. So I feel like we might be the women to do it. If people would just put us in charge, (laughs) Kirsten, got this shit. We would assemble an amazing crack team of commandos. If the hidden job market is listening. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, We we are signing up for this task. Maybe we should start a think tank. And just work for a think tank. (laughs) Well, so, I mean, you get all kinds of statistics and facts that come out of think tanks. Sure. And they yeah. never show their receipts. No. Um, <laughs> so I would say that for me, like the biggest takeaway again here is chill the hell out. Yeah. Like own your individual experience. Yeah. Fix what you can control and quit worrying about whether or not the market is hot or not. Quit worrying about whether or not it's there's a resignation. <laughs> I mean, some parts of the market are always yeah. hot, right, Kirsten? A, now, you see the TV <laughs> show, right? Wasn't there, like, a hot or not show on TV? There definitely was. There definitely was. But, I mean, yeah, I think to your point, and to acknowledge, like, we really know, like, we know nothing. Even if you think about the whole purpose of science, when people, like, recreate experiments, it's always to, like, try to prove, like, a hypothesis false. Like, we're always looking for the evidence to like completely change what we know. And so I think I just like to humbly approach it as like, well, we know basically nothing, but like, here's this information and here's the context and like make an informed decision. That's like for you, make an informed decision. And I feel like that's all we can really ask for. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that ultimately anytime you are talking to a would be expert, Especially if they're trying to sell you something. If they start dropping stats, ask for their receipts. Yeah. Oh, even just basic receipts. Like you don't even need to get into like the complex method. Just like find out who the information came from. What year? What? Well, geographically. (laughs) I will tell you that feet to the fire, most of the people I know recruiters, any guru of any kind are really bad about making shit up. 
And so what I really think happens is that somebody some in an influential position somewhere hears somebody make up a fucking number. Yeah. And then it gets repeated. And then it gets written down by somebody. And now yeah. it's gospel. Right? Yeah. So like now Oh, there is a hidden job market because Newsweek said so based on, oh, what one guy who is an expert and how is he an expert? What made him, what statistical analysis did he do? Like, am I a recruitment expert? I mean, I'm an expert in how to recruit, but does that mean I know everything about the recruitment market? Hells to the no. Yeah. Absolutely not. I had somebody the other day who was like, I want to do such and so. I'm like, I don't even know what that thing is. <laughs> I didn't know that's that like that the, was an option as a job. But like defining Hallmark to me of like a true expert is someone who's just like, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know. No clue. Not None. my area. No, yeah. Just yeah. like. Mm-mm. You want to do what now? My answer to everything is maybe. It's like, is this true? And I'm like, maybe it might. It might be true. I don't know. It a lot of things might be true. true. But I also will say I have like tried to stop making up examples because I don't want to contribute to people being like, you know, like I'll make up some example to demonstrate something, and then suddenly this is like a fact. I'm like, I actually just like completely made that up. So now my examples are like, you know if X percent of some people say something and it's like, that sucks, but it told to like, people just hear something. And it's like, Oh, like, I want to use that. That sounds good. And it's like, Ooh, yeah, fuck. that's right. When I make up an example, I always go like totally fucking extreme so that nobody would ever say that. So like people are, I get people all the time here. Like, well, I didn't apply for this job because what if this, and what if that, and then what if this other thing? And I'm like, stop it. What if an elephant falls on you from an air, a circus Ooh. plane flying overhead? What if? That's good. That's good. And they're like, and I literally said that the other day. Somebody goes, is that, is that a thing? Are there, are there circus planes? I was like, no, that's the point. <laughs> you don't worry know. Though, right? <laughs> anything could happen, right? You're like, now I have a new thing to be afraid of. You do not need yeah. to be afraid of falling elephants. Like, <laughs> I absolve you of that fear. Oh <laughs> like, it's not like dating and oh. why life in like urban areas, <laughs> flying elephants falling and squishing you, not a thing to be concerned about. But like the point of my saying that is always that like you can spend your whole life on what if. Yeah. What if none of that happens? And I yeah. think like, I feel like these statistics in particular about the market are kind of what if statistics, like what if there's a great resignation and everybody quits their job on the same day? Well, that feels problematic at a number of levels. Maybe people are quitting your jobs because you suck. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And maybe everyone's quitting because they all have like a really exciting ideas of like new things. They're going to like better contribute to the economy. It's like, we just like don't, we don't know. We don't yeah. know. We have no idea. At the same time, I have to say, I get really, I have um, some folks in my LinkedIn network, which, as you know, has like at least three of everything in it. So I, yeah, you have like, like a thousand of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a LinkedIn influencer. Nice try. Three Stop of everything. It. Blush. <laughs> so anyway. Like, cut this part out of the podcast. <laughs> Um, but like, so I have these people who are like, if you don't feel empowered at work, just quit your job and start your own business, yeah. empower yourself. And I'm like, you need to slow your roll. Not everybody is a great candidate for self-employment. I I will say whenever I say that, I'm always like, but also make sure you're really comfortable with risk. You know what I mean? I'm like, here's the disclaimers to all of that stuff. Cause I'm like, I'm. I like to just light shit up and quit and like go do my own thing. And I'm like, I have, I have a dog. I don't have children. You know what I mean? Like if I really fuck up my life, it's just me. You know what I mean? But I'm like, I'm not going to go tell my like mom of four friend who like has a home payment. I'm like, yeah, just fucking quit your job and make your own. Cause I'm like, you might be broke for like 12. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. You can't give like unqualified advice people but it's and it's always like small business gurus that are oh, like sure. trying to say it 
And I'm like, just, just stop and picture that world. Yeah. Everybody quits. Every market out there gets flooded with the thousand, thousand micro vendors. Yeah. Now what? Like, how is any, like the market won't support that. It, that is not a healthy thing to set for people as an aspirational goal. <laughs> Pizza's here. Uh, so, um, so on that note, <laughs> that, I, that's, dog, that's literally my up. puppy though. I have yeah. to get in my puppies. Is yes. people, especially in like the business, like, coaching co coaching the business coaching world where people are like let me teach you how to run a business and they've never run like their business is teaching you how to run a business they've never actually run a business and like that is so rampant right now especially because people are unhappy with their jobs and it makes me very nervous and even like I have friends who got into that business and I'm like this is like wrong with society like this is uh, to your like this is dangerous I think it could harm people I think you got to think about who you consider an expert and who you're taking advice from because if any market is flooded Lord someone give me a stat on how flooded the business coaching network is right now because it's just well and I found out apparently there are business coaching franchises out there and I heard this right on my podcast with delightful um, got guest named Giuseppe, and he was just you know reporting the facts that this is a thing, and I like I had to literally bite my tongue because I was like, how in the name of all that's holy could you possibly possibly franchise that? Because ultimately, so much of that is personal experience. Like you cannot franchise Dr. Christian Lee Hill's consulting that's not a thing you could franchise oh because what are you going to franchise other phds oh in statistical analysis and research oh like, it's like wow. a new like mlm nightmare oh my god that's like so terrible. i'm just like i mm. maybe there is if if somebody listening to this knows a reason why this is legit i would be delighted to be proven wrong but I, I don't even let my business partners do our career coaching through our business, not because they're not smart and beautiful women yeah. who have a lot of experience during recruitment, but they are not trained coaches Yeah, and they do not have the breadth of experience that I have. So they're like, well, you know, when do you feel like you might be comfortable with us taking another well, when you've been recruiting for 20 years and you're a certified yeah. advice and guidance professional, then I'd be delighted to hand that to you. People ask me why I don't hire more people all the time. And I was like, well, because people want to work with me. Who they the hell would I hire? Me. Yeah. Yeah. Who would I hire? I'm not going to clone. You know what I mean? I'm not going to clone. But to your point, I'm like, it would be if a client hires me and I outsource it to someone else to like design their survey, like to me, that's wrong. You know what I mean? I'm like, no, you want me to do it. It's my expertise. Like, exactly. I just, no, I'm with you. And I also feel like similarly, I've, I've been in business for five years, which is like not a ton, but like, I still wouldn't want to give people business advice. We're like, why don't you be a coach and give advice? I'm like, no, I'm like not experienced enough to do that. That's like, what? that's wild. Listen to my podcast and hear me casually share some stories of personal experience and take what it would be will. Like I, it would feel wrong to take money for something, you know uh, what I mean? Like hire yeah. like a real person who's a real business coach. Who I does hired that. a business coach. He's delightful. He has had like eight businesses, including ones with like, you know, eight figure incomes, etc. He has failed mm -hmm. epically. He has succeeded epically and everything between. Michael is the person that you should hire. No, no nobody should listen oh, to I me about that. it. I want to send me Michael's info. Yes. I, I, I'm you can you delight. Like, because I'm tired. I honestly, I'm like, I also like refuse to be coached anymore by people who are not like infinitely more successful than I am. You know what I mean? I'm like, I actually like don't want your advice unless you are like, just like Michael, I guess you like, you've run like multiple business, like you've learned from your experiences. And we, I think in across the board, we need to be looking for that. Yeah. Like if you're looking for a job and you want help, hire an expert to help you do that. Right. Like I just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. 
And on that, I think we've we've solved this this mystery. They're just made up. Quit repeating these statistics or you're a butthead. That's the new thing. If you have the sources, share them with all of us. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Kirsten. You're awesome. <laughs> You've been listening to, Hey, I want your job. For more information on how you can get your own awesome job, visit ONH Consulting at www.onhconsulting.com. We offer incredible resumes, no nonsense career advice, and real world tips for landing a job in today's market. Check us out on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Insta for more insider information. Soon, you'll be hearing us say, I'm Michelle Olivier, and hey, I want your job.